Aloha, O oh doers. My name is Jose Ignacio, and I am your new host in the wonderful world of Odu. Now, I'm also a representative of the very legitimate and very real Stealthy Wood. And as you know, Stealthy Wood continues to grow. So manually managing all of our purchase orders and suppliers just isn't going to cut it anymore. Before Odu, we recorded everything using paper, and no one likes paper for forms, spreadsheets, our little check-in logs, everything. It became chaotic, and we don't like chaos here. Now, getting approvals was tedious, and at times, we also incorrectly paid vendor bills. Now, keeping an eye on every order was a huge waste of our time, and time is money, quite literally in this economy. Now, with the Odoo Purchase app, we've said goodbye to all of these problems. Our purchase is now neatly organized, and our processes are as well. Now, which one of these things do you think helped us the most? Well, it's the ability to track every purchase easier than ever before. But that's not all. Stealthy Wood takes advantage of plenty of other features as well. So, we can now automatically send requests for quotations to our suppliers depending on our stock levels. Or whenever we make a sales order, we can decide on the fly. Now, thanks to purchase agreements, we get the best prices from our vendors, either by negotiating with several suppliers at once or by bulk purchasing and bulk pricing with one supplier for recurring purchases. Now, we can also get accurate statistics on our supplier's performance, enabling us to maintain relationships with only the best suppliers. Now, Stealthy Wood's use of the purchase app allows us to get to our customers all of their products very quickly and cheaply, which everyone loves. So, let's check out the purchase app and create an RFQ or a request for quotation using Stealthy Wood's database. And as I always say, enough chit chat, let's get in there. Okay, oh doers. So here we are on the very beautiful purchase dashboard, which I will always call beautiful because it is. Now from our purchase dashboard, we can also see an overview of all RFQs and my RFQs divided into various categories. Those that are to send or draft RFQs that haven't been sent to the vendor yet, those that are awaiting, which are sent RFQs that are awaiting confirmation, and the one that we don't like, late, sent RFQs where the confirmation deadline has passed or will pass today. Now to the right of that, we see some useful key performance indicators or KPIs for my acronym lovers. And these are all related to our purchases. And below, if we look over here, we have a list view of all of the orders, both RFQs and POs or purchase orders, along with a wealth of useful information, such as their next planned activity and their status. So what do we always practice here at Odoo? Well, we gotta create something. So the create button that you see up here that I just clicked Let's us create a request for quotation. Now we're gonna see a lot of stuff here and I wanna break it down for you. The very first thing we see is vendor and we need to select a vendor. And who are we going to select? Well, I always talk about them, Azure Interior. And we're gonna select them. Now vendor reference. Then we can add the reference code that the vendor is using. For example, on their sales order or bid. Below this, we see order deadline, and that is the date we expect the request for quotation to be confirmed by. When we confirm the RFQ, Odu converts the RFQ into a purchase order. Even if the deadline is passed, you can still confirm the order in Odu. Now, what is the next thing we see? Well, receipt date. Now, this is the delivery date promised by the vendor. It is useful to add that information to generate an on-time delivery rate for your vendor. If we click on it, we can see even more detailed statistics as well, but we're, we kind of need to go over this overview. So lastly, you can send a receipt confirmation email by ticking the ask confirmation box here. And we're actually gonna click that now. And we wanna specify the number of days. In that case, I don't know, five? Yeah, let's go with five. If you don't see this, by the way, click configuration, go to settings, scroll to the order section, and make sure receipt reminder is activated. Now the receipt reminder automatically sends an email to the vendor five days before the receipt date. And this asks them to confirm the shipment arrival date. Now, I'm also going to deselect ask confirmation now. Now this gives the vendor a chance to notify me of any shipping delays. I can also configure this in the vendor's contact form. So whenever I select the vendor, it automatically activates receipt reminder. 
Now, the very next thing that I want to do is I want to click on this external link button that we see here next to the Azure Interior tab. And the reason is because we want to go over here into the Sales and the Purchase tab, the Purchase section, and there you see it, Receipt Reminder Field. And we're going to click Discard. Now, let's add the products we're looking to purchase. In this case, we're going to add Office Chair. And as you can see, the price per unit after this loads is automatically set to $55. This happens because this product is configured to use that price for Azure Interior. However, this isn't the newly negotiated price that we agreed upon. So let's change that. Instead of adding the price to the RFQ itself, we will edit the product via its external product link here. So we click on this button next to the product and you'll see after it loads, it takes us over to a new product tab. Now in here, we want to navigate to the purchase tab and we want to find Azure interior and there we have it. And what is the new price? Well, let's say that they gave us $7 off. So we're at $48 now instead of 55. And then once that we're done with this, you want to hit save, always save your progress. Now this new price will be automatically set on future RFQs associated with this particular vendor. Now, for the updated price to appear, we have to delete the product and re-add it. It's just the way we do these things. So, you want to click on this trash icon, and then you're going to add the product again. And what do we need? We need that office chair. And there you have it. Ah, I like seeing when these pop up. The new price is automatically applied. Now, let's adjust our quantity to 15 chairs, because now that we're saving $7, everything adds up. So, quantity, 15, and... We're going to hit, you guessed it, we're going to hit save. Now when the RFQ is ready, we can send it by email to our vendor. So if you see up here, send by email, you guessed it, we're going to click that. Now here as well, by the way, we can edit the email template and we can also save it as a new template for future emails if needed. But for right now, we'll just go ahead and send it as is. So we're going to hit send. Now. We see the status of the RFQ changed. And what did it change to? Well, it changed to RFQ sent. At this point, we can also resend the RFQ. We can print it or we can cancel it. Now then, when the vendor confirms the RFQ, we'll click on confirm order. And our RFQ is now a purchase order. So once that we finish this, what's the next thing we got to do? Well, we have to receive products. Now, since we already have the inventory app installed, and our product is a physical, storable item, Odoo automatically created a receipt, as you can see, and with this, con or, sorry, with this convenient receipt smart button, a little bit of an Odoopsie there, my friends. So, we also have several new options, by the way. First, we can send the PO now by email, just like for the RFQ. We can also lock the purchase order to prevent any further editing. We can, of course, unlock it again as needed because that's how Odoo works. We can do things. Now note that purchase orders can be locked by default by simply going to app settings and enabling lock confirmed orders. So let's try something though. So let's try to create a bill. Oops, look at that, we can't. As our product's control policy is based on received quantities, which is also found under configuration and directly inside of the settings. Now, what does this mean? Well. This means we cannot create a vendor bill until we have at least received some of the ordered office chairs. We can, however, change that and manually set a product's bill control policy. So I'll show you how to do this on another product. So first, we got to go somewhere. We got to go to products, products. In this case, we're going to select the one that I always like using, acoustic block screens. And once we select this, we're going to go ahead and edit it and then make your way over to the purchase tab. Now, here, we can set the control policy to on-ordered quantities, which means we'll be able to create a bill as soon as the request for quotation is confirmed. If we leave the control, uh, if we leave the control policy set to on-received quantities, we can only create a bill when we receive all or some of the product. But we're going to discard these changes because they were just for visual purposes. So for now, let's go back to the purchase order we've been working on with Azure Interior. So we're going to go ahead and navigate on over to orders, purchase orders, and we're going to select our purchase order. Now, let's say we already received some of our products. Since we have the inventory app installed, 
we have the receive products button and the receipt smart button enabling us to record the delivered quantities. I want to make a note though that if you don't have the inventory app, you'll have to manually edit the receive column in the product line. It's just how it is, unfortunately, my friends. So let's click on receive products. Now, if we immediately click on validate, Oda will fill out the received or done quantities with the quantities ordered. But if we only receive part of our order, we can manually add the done quantities. But in this case, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna go ahead and click cancel on this pop-up. We're gonna go ahead on a head on over to uh, edit. And we're gonna do done. And we always select my favorite number five. And we're gonna save. Now, if we want to validate an incomplete order, we just click validate. Otis suggests we either create a back order, which is what we use when we expect to receive the remaining products later, or no back order if we don't expect to receive the rest. In this case, we know we'll receive the rest soon, so let's create a back order. And this enables us to create a bill for the first part of the order we've received. And as we can see, we are only billed for the five received office chairs. But Let's go back over to the purchase order via the breadcrumbs, which I will always talk about. You know, we have delicious bread here at Odoo, I guess. Now, clicking on Create Bill gives us access to the draft bill for the five chairs that we've already received. Everything looks good, so let's go back to the purchase order. And now, you'll notice there's now a Vendor Bill Smart button, which is right next to the Receipt Smart button up here. And the Receipt Smart button now displays the number two. As we have two different receipts now, one for the five chairs and one for the back order. So what are we going to do? We're going to click on that receipt smart button to see something else. Now, once it this loads, you can click on the ready receipt. I just got word that we received the remaining products from Azure Interior, live chat and everything. So let's click on validate, apply to add all the products. And we're going to go back to the purchase order again via the breadcrumbs. So we can now create a second bill. So we're going to go ahead and create bill. And here we can see we've on, we're only billed for the remaining 10 chairs. Let's add a bill date because we won't be able to confirm a bill without one. You always got to have a date. So we're going to go ahead and click on to edit and add a bill date. Now that we've done that, if you notice, we can now actually confirm it. And then what else can we do? We can register the payment whenever my accounting team sends the payment to Azure Interior. So we select Create Payment, and we save. Now you see that this now has the posted status and sports a very clean in-payment banner. And that's it. We're done. Everything. Good job. Pat yourselves on the back. So today we saw the basics of what the purchase app can do for a company. But we can do so much more, and you always know that as well. So be sure to check out the next videos in the purchase module. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and stay cold.